If you're just tuning in, we are discussing the importance of women in e-commerce and the impact it has on the African economy. So please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 A lot of people are already sending messages, but we'll take them some some of the messages. Um, so before we went on a break, there was something Jennifer asked you, uh, Mulai, and it was about the kinds of um, products that come on your platform. I don't think you really got around that answer so if i'm a farmer can i be can i can i also sell can i sell my farm produce on your platform you know like process um, nuts okay. process palm oil and all of that can i do that on your platform or is just strictly fashion no uh, our platform is everything of the african culture so we have a lot of fashion jewelry food beauty wow and fabrics wow wow Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> women. <laughs> so let's take this uh, question. Can you give us quick nuggets? You know, for people like us that do not want to go into the e-com, that would like to go into the e-commerce space, but we are kind of scared to go into the e-commerce space. Can you give us quick nuggets on how easy we can actually sign up or um, get to know a, a thing or two about um, e-commerce? Sure. Uh, the first thing is there is two types of people. There are people that like to read and to learn before practicing and those that learn by practicing. So depending on who you are, there is two ways of going about it. If you like to learn before going, you like to research, we have a white paper report that we put out two years ago, which we shared all our data in, the insight of what type of product our buyers like all over the world, et cetera, et cetera. So you can read that. It's free. It's on our platform. If you like to read before going, and then you can go on the platform to create your shop. If you're someone that likes to go and try it out, the, I think the best way to go, yeah, <laughs> the best way to go is to uh, do not even wait to have your products ready. One thing you must know in Africa is, as I explained, uh, someone, when they order, you cannot withdraw the money right away, but at least you can talk to them. You can talk to a buyer even before they pay. So the first thing you must keep in mind is, uh, like Jennifer said, take pictures of what you want to sell. Even, even if it's something you're just wearing, you take a picture of it, you put it on the platform, it's free. And if someone else happens to want it, then you can let them know that you have, for example, two to three weeks to actually make it and then sell it. Because another nugget that you might need to know is that the number one uh, action that makes a seller sell is to often put a new product because you don't know what people will like. So... To alleviate the pressure, you don't need to have a big stock, to have a lot of pictures. It doesn't work like that. It's better to put one product every week than to put 12 products once a year. Okay. Mm. Absolutely. 12 products once a year. Mm. So it's very, very important because you, you cannot learn in the process. When you put products every week, you can learn about what people like and what they don't like. And uh, a lot of sellers, not only African sellers, not only uh, of fashion, you ask almost everyone what is their best-selling product and what is the story behind. Most of the time, for example, even Burner Boy said that about his song. They never know. It's something that they did one day very simply, but it's because they do it every day, mm -hmm. regularly, that one day the magic happens. It grows so to you. really simplify, yeah, to really simplify the process of going, I recommend not uh, waiting for. Every month, if you can. Okay, so you see that this technology is not helping our matter in, <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> but you see, infrastructure, technology, yeah. right? Um, um, mm. Data and all of that still remains a huge challenge. You know, challenge. As we are talking to you via Zoom now, you are cracking, you are not hearing, <laughs> and all of that. It still remains. <laughs> So, it, I mean, infrastructure still remains our biggest challenge, you know. So, if, um, <clears throat> if we say that e-commerce is the future, right, what should we be talking to the African leadership, you know? What, what, what would you say to them about um, harnessing this? Because the report I read about McKenzie saying that, I mean, a company would make about $75 billion, right, just from e-commerce business. Mm -hmm. It tells me that there's so much money in this, in this space, but yes. the infrastructure in Africa does not back this, you know, this um, money. Yeah. So yeah. what would you be saying to the African leaders, you know, in terms of infrastructure? What should they be looking at putting on ground to boost this economy? Given that e-commerce can actually take a lot of people out of poverty. Exactly. You know, a lot of people out of poverty because I can just sit at the comfort of if I'm creative, I can create something, somebody might like it, and I'm able to sell it at whatever price that I want to sell. So what would you say to the government? 
Uh, honestly, uh, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm becoming too Nigerian on it, but I don't really trust a government to help entrepreneurs. But uh, you know, if I were to, act- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry, if I had to say that, but uh, if I were to actually trust the government to do so one day, I think the one number one thing is for every government to be able to think long term. Mm. You need to think first about what is your ten year strategy and invest in this horizon. A lot of the things I think government do to help entrepreneurship, whether it is in e-commerce or not, that doesn't work, is because they are impatient. They will give you a highlight of startups for one week, one year, and afterwards they will come down on you with taxes, mm. with a lot of, like, it's, 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 so it's complicated because, yeah, if you want to really have to build a, really, a real industry in any type, I think, of uh, operations, you need a, a long-term... Very view. patient capital, need, yes. Very yeah. patient. And, uh, and very patient also ecosystem because I think mm-hmm. what uh, a lot of, for example, uh, entrepreneurs on e-commerce are missing is things like the customs that you have trouble organizing when you want to get the things out or in. Mm. Payments, like it's, it's the best example. Like mm. what all of the Nigerian people are suffering through right now mm. to control payments is important for the currency but it's hurting entrepreneurs more than it's helping them. So it's, it's a really important... Uh, in the end, it's going to be a discussion about if the government believes more in its past, so focusing on fossil resources that are going to end one day because oil is not forever, mm-hmm. no matter where in the world, yeah. or they're going to, to invest in an unending culture that is going and that is used all over the world already. So it's a matter of... What is the long-term view? Either you focus on what works, uh, what I worked over the last 20, 50 years, or you focus on what is going to work over 50 years. So it's really the big difference, I think. Absolutely. All right, so how do we train? Do you have, um, you have some comments? How do we train more women to get into this space? That's from Angela, one of our audience has sent in a message. Um, how do we train more women to get into this space? Then um, someone says, this is Karen from Joss. Online purchase is quite good. My experience with AliExpress, not that good. I made purchases and... Ah, thank God somebody has mentioned it. I made purchases <laughs> and forever yeah. two years. Even with emails, I never received my products. I mean, so there's a huge market for e-commerce. Because can, people I, are, can, I <laughs> answer, can I answer that? that can I answer that question for a few seconds? Um, so I've been dealing with AliExpress for a very long time. I'm not advocating for them. I mean, I've had my issues. But then I also noticed, like I said earlier at the beginning of, of, of the show, that um, Nigeria is out to get you. The truth is I found out that some of my items, were not, it wasn't being held by AliExpress. It was being held by our yeah. own post office. The vendor. Oh, post office. Post office. Wow. So there was an item I ordered. It took about three months. When I got to the post office, they had passed it from one post office to um, branch to the other. So this is still so, part of the infrastructural problem. Yeah, exactly. So when about. it finally got mm. to where um, my house was close to, they told me it had been there for three months. Guess what? The package was looking as dead Dirty. as it can be. Wow. So sometimes it's really not from the platform. No, but that is why someone like um, um, Ari, Ari, Africa, Africa. Africa. <laughs> the name, you know, makes sense to me because yeah. they come to pick it from my house and they go to give it at the person's doorstep. Mm-hmm. So I think we should start encouraging more platforms like, like this, that, yes. you know, instead of the other platforms that cannot control other factors, because that's what I hear you say. Which but you have your, co- yeah, your question. Yeah. My question, what I was going to ask earlier was, um, do you have a tracking system? Because I feel like that's one of the very big issues because um, I placed an order today and I know I'm expecting it in two weeks or in a week in a week, and I can't track it. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it's going to. I don't know if it has even gotten halfway to me or where it has ended up. There are other, there are, um, e-commerce, other e-commerce platforms that I've shopped on that will tell you, mm. oh, it just left, it just left our warehouse. Mm. It is in the second warehouse. Oh, it is now in your country. Mm-hmm. Um, it has gotten to your country's post office and then tell you, oh, it has been delivered. Mm-hmm. Then you know that, oh, okay, it has finally been delivered. Then you probably wait for like two or three days before the post office will probably... Um, contact you and then you go pick it up. Do you have um, something like that? Do you have a tracking system where the customers can tell where their products are? Their yeah, they can monitor their products or their orders. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, that's something that we offer. Uh, most of the time, it's dependent of, on the seller's choice of provider because uh, 
like we discussed before, if you lose the local post office, depending on some countries, you might have no tracking or no information. But what we offer on Africrea is when a seller use the tracking office, the tracking services that we provide with DHL, the, the buyer then has access all the time during the transaction to a link to see where his order or her order is going on to. Okay, so, so this is something that we have, but it's really depending on the seller choice of provider uh, to ship. And if you use our uh, partnership with DHL, you will have tracking all the way from the day it's shipped to the day it arrives at your door. Okay. So there's a question for you. That's from Wurola from Magodo. She says, your guest is in a market that is quite challenging with the data he has gotten through the years. The running, uh, um, the run the running of e-com uh, uh, from the running of e-commerce business. What is the one trend or insight about Africa he discovered from Data Insight after starting? Did you get the question? Oh, um, I lost it. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the one data there is a lot. I think my favorite one, uh, for the sake of our sellers is how patient uh, a client can be when they buy something made in Africa, but you keep them updated. I, come again, I People didn't hear that. Surprised? Yeah. Uh, the number that I found very interesting is uh, 21 days. That's the average time people wait between ordering and receiving their product. Wow. And they are able to do so patiently and even reordering afterwards, as long as you keep them updated. Absolutely. Because I believe one thing, well, one thing we underestimate in Africa is that uh, what we have is rare. When you do something out of your culture, when you do something with your hands or the hands of a teller and from your own taste, uh, this is something that they cannot find anywhere else. It's not like China. Okay, so today technology. technology. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take more comments. Oh, okay. okay, so this is from <laughs> sorry. Oh, I don't know to... from Kaduna. Hmm. What is the size of e-commerce business in Africa? That's the true potential. Hmm. So he wants to know what. Oh, I'm going to ask. I hope we're able to reconnect um, Mulai Bag. Mulai. Okay, <laughs> Mulai. <laughs> Mulai. Hello. Mulai. Can you hear me now? I'm here. We lost you. You see, technology will not let us to be great in Africa. <laughs> okay, so there's a question. Sorry, the live is not there. Yeah, the question. Can you take that question yeah. again? Um, Arena from Kaduna said, um, he's asking, what is the size of e-commerce business in Africa? Like, what's the true potential? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> it's in the billions. I think uh, the number that you gave before is something that is comparable. I believe the most important number is really uh, what I said earlier, that people are really willing to wait for something that is made out of Africa, mm. and that for once we could be a big producer thanks to e-commerce rather than just a consumer. Mm. Fantastic. Easy. Okay, um, this, is, again, AliExpress has propped his head out. So we have, <laughs> how do you manage quality? AliExpress <laughs> has has a lot of product, but to get the quality product as seen in the description behind the picture usually takes a lot of hours. This is from Bimbo, from Aja. So how do you manage quality? Um, like I explained, uh, yeah, we I manage... You already that. Don't worry, you don't need to explain again. But, I have but a there's question, a question. Wait, let me take another take a question. question. A final question from our guest, and I'll come to your question. It says, what are the demerits of e-commerce? That's from uh, Rafael Akori from um, Zaria. What are the demerits of e-commerce? The demerits, uh, I think it's about what Issa uh, pointed out earlier, is about the trust. I think the, tr the demerits of e-commerce is that it requires a level of trust before that has yet to be built in Africa. Yeah. It's complicated to trust someone you never saw mm -hmm. and buy something you never, you never saw either. So it's yeah. really a story of building trust through experience uh, and seeing over and over you had some bad experience, but the majority are going to be good. Okay, so um, I know e-commerce is done in different forms. Um, there's a platform like yours. There are platforms like um, AliExpress, Alibaba, and the rest. And then there are also people who do business on Instagram and Facebook. 
Now, I want to know, um, what's, what are the benefits of using a platform like yours as opposed to using Instagram or Facebook? Mm -hmm. I mean, like um, Isi said, or like we all know, trust is a very big issue. Um, I know I recently, like, I have an accessories business, and I run it on, on Instagram where we do promo ads and all of that. But I want to know what the benefits are. Mm -hmm. Like, let me use myself, or let's use me as a case study. Mm -hmm. If I need to leave Instagram, why should I leave and Instagram come and come to your platform to do business? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jennifer. First, you, you never leave Instagram. If it's there that your clients are, never leave Instagram. Uh, we are here to support you when you sign on Instagram. And I will get, just ask you one question. With all your orders on Instagram, are you sometimes overwhelmed or lost into knowing what to send to everyone or when to reply to everyone? Yeah. So that's where we help. Like I told you, it's in the order management access. Because honestly, our job is to be your silent partner and to help you manage with clarity where are your orders at, where is your money at, uh, who has, has uh, an order that is li lacking reply, or is response or when order has been received. Okay, so... Um, oh, wow. Hello? Yeah, go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the network yeah. is... So it's, it's, our job is to help you save time hmm. and save energy. And I imagine uh, this is the two things that you have in the most precious asset that you have as an entrepreneur. It's your energy. If you spend time every time scrolling to find a buyer, to know, oh, okay, I was supposed to talk to someone about this, which order it is, mm -hmm. or, 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 or you lose time re-answering every time to get a payment, et cetera, et cetera. Our job is to take all of that and make it simpler, quicker, and, of course, cheaper. So that's really how well we have. I could go into more details, but uh, you, you can still send on Instagram and Facebook and just still use our solution. Okay. And that's the goal. All right, so as we celebrate women all over the world, um, what kind of, uh, what, what do you see, um, how do you see e-commerce impacting the woman, the African woman? You know, because what you said really, it really got me thinking. We have a lot of creative women I mean, they're just sitting mm -hmm. down in the comfort of their home, making lovely um, mitted um, things, clothes. making clothes and all of that. They are very industrious, you know. So how would you encourage women to say, you know what, let's take you out from that small corner of your, your bedroom and let's comfort push you out into the world and make you financially empowered. So how do you see this impact coming up? Um, I think first, uh, th this discussion is the first step, is to show them uh, that there is a lot of hurdle and step that we can take uh, for them and we can take out, whether it is ship, get paid, and manage the everyday so they can do it without having to append their lives. And I think the, the second thing is that what I said earlier is that they can go step by step. Hmm. I really think uh, the way to go is not to require someone to go all in or go bust. I really think there is a step of learning and trying things slowly if need be, but regularly. So I really think our job is to make it uh, easy and uh, I might say less costly to start, but uh, to help people all over because we coach. That's our job. We coach people uh, and we give them insights into what are the things that work and what are the things that they need to stop doing or maybe uh, do differently. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> we like, thank you, ladies, because they are screaming in my ear. We've run out of time. But, I mean, we were having so much fun. We lost track of time. It would have been nice to also understand women that do not have maybe handy work. They, what they have is intellectual property. Can they also be part of this e-commerce transaction? Okay. You want to quickly yeah. answer that? Yes. Uh, like I said, uh, the good thing about culture is that it's something that is about perception, too. Yeah. Even if you know a tailor that is good with his hand, but you know how to style, mm. you can create together a company that is going to rock the world. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. I hope you come back again to talk to us. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Mulai. Thank you. All right. So Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence life towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. Now, if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here
share it is again. E-commerce is a powerful means to connect the unconnected to global trade. I mean, this is very powerful. So if you know the power behind e-commerce, you will jump right on Afrique. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, we'll see you live on Monday as we bring you another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>